Hi, Essential Craftsman. Thanks for coming back. Axes have lately enjoyed a resurgence of popularity and they've become collectible. There would be a question perhaps of why a double bed axe or why a single bed axe. They have different strengths and weaknesses. A single bed axe is also a hammer. It makes it the most useful tool you can have in the wilderness. If you've got to pick one tool to have with you if you're going to be stranded in a wilderness environment, it needs to be an axe. It's a weapon, it will drive stakes, it acts as a hammer, it will cut. You can use it for skinning and gutting game if you need to. It's the versatile tool. If you are a woodcutter, if you're falling timber, a double bitted axe gives you the luxury of having one edge that's to be kept razor sharp at all times and one edge that's to be used if you know you're going to be working in close proximity to the ground, thereby in danger of dulling your tool. You keep track of that by flattening or putting a small notch on at the end of the axe handle on either the dull or the sharp side just so you can keep track of it so without looking down you know whether or not the, the perpetually sharp edge or the dullable, expendable, sacrificial edge is in close contact with the ground. So that the transition can be made in mid-stroke without stopping to look. This is an Olympic style falling axe. The extended bits, the narrowness of the bit, was developed to reach through the thick bark on the Douglas fir trees on the Olympic Peninsula and the redwood trees in Northern California, Southern Oregon. This hatchet is flat on this side, so you can hew a flat line, raising the chips. It's sort of a chisel on a handle, essentially, like a broad axe. A brush axe, I guess that's obvious, but small vines and uh, small diameter pieces that yield to the blow are hooked and cut off. I can tell you from using one as a kid, these are miserable. Similar in appearance, different in purpose from a Pulaski. This is developed for um, cutting fire trail. You can chop and you can grub. Handy tool in, in construction, concrete forming. This is an undercutter. When our forefathers were logging the forests, they had not yet figured out that the undercut, which directs the fall of the tree, could be cut out in a pie shape in section. Part of the reason for that was a cross-cut saw was so hard to make cut uphill. So they would cut two parallel slices to orient the direction of the fall. Once the slices were cut into the tree, this undercutter was used as a chisel on a handle to chop the face out. An undercutter. <laughs> This is a log brand. This is actually our family's log brand. I grew up logging. Uh, my dad was a logger and a mill worker. This is how logs are identified before they were put on a truck um, when logging was less mechanized than it is now, though it is still part of the industry. My dad and mom and uh, my brother and sister and I have been devoutly Christian, and this signified the mark that was understood to have been sort of code for the Christians in the primitive church. It was my dad's choice for his logging brand. So here are examples of two, two chopping tools that can be used for the same purpose but are not intended for the same purpose. This is a boy's axe. Uh, it is Swedish, a nice little axe on a beautiful old handle for chopping wood. This is a splitting maul, eight pounds. It is not for chopping, it's for splitting. Step back, Nate, I'll split that, I hope. Yeah. So there's nothing sharp about this. It's for bruising and pushing apart. Splitting wall, eight pounder. This is a picker rune, intended entirely for drawing wood toward you, like this. Yeah. This is a monster mall. It is a modern adaptation of a splitting mall. For the record, I hate it. The pipe handle is lifeless in my hand. I do not think that that severe triangle is any better. It feels bad but I never was able to break the handle out of this thing for my dad, and he appreciated that. But these are just better. They're graceful, they feel good in your hand, the handle's longer. 
Now I will ha perhaps have some object that they like a Monster Mall. You're welcome to them. Splitting wedge. You get a piece that just won't split. Start it in. Use the back of the splitting mall. Keep in mind as it upsets and those edges become less and less attached to the wedge, at some point they will come off, sometimes at high velocity. One final type of axe. This is a wire axe. This is what loggers used before they had cutting torches. You would take a double-bitted axe, it was entirely sacrificial, stick it slightly cross-grained into a piece of wood, hopefully on a knot, lay the cable across the edge of the double-bitted axe, and then simply chop onto the cable, onto the double-bitted axe. You can see how soft that is. That's probably pretty much pure wrought iron, way softer than the carbon steel cutting edge of the axe, and the double bit would cut the cable propelled by the wire axe. Nothing to it. That's a 7 8 inch diameter winch line off a D6 cat. Long live the cutting torch. <laughs> a wood slick is like that carpenter's hatchet we were talking about where the cutting surface is in a plane all the way out on one side with the handle tipped out of that plane so it can essentially be used as a plane rather than a chisel to smooth up right to a vertical face. Wood chisels are great tools. It should have a handle about 24 inches long. Crows. I seem to have four or five. This is a tool for splitting shakes. Visualize a shake bolt, western red cedar out here. The fro is placed at the edge of the block. It is driven in with a wooden club or mallet until the fro is embedded about halfway and then you twist and split off the shake. Here are some tools which are entirely agricultural and not lumbering. These are the blades to size um, for mowing grass or grain, wheat, oats, hay. Think of mowing hay field with these. I have seven still on handles, I'll show you in a minute. This is a hay saw. When hay was put up loose in shocks, it would tend to tamp itself down over time. In the winter, a farmer could, if this were sharp, cut, saw, if you will, into the pile of loose hay which had compacted over the months since it was stacked up and cut into the pile so he didn't have to pull out great big poorly defined shapes. So this is a falling wedge, an early one because now they're made of a very high density plastic. In between the steel wedges and the plastic wedges magnesium was used. The reason for that was if you drive a steel wedge into the back of a cut being made by the chainsaw and the chainsaw encounters the steel wedge, you have a lot of filing to do. But visualize the back cut on a tree that has the face put in it to direct the fall. The tree begins to settle backwards to pinch the back cut. This wedge is driven in to lift the tree and push it in the direction you want it to go. This is a barking spud that has been gravely abused. It's been used as a chisel. But on a wood handle, this is used to peel the bark off of a tree. This is a lipped adze on a handle that doesn't fit it. This was used to hew a log into a beam configuration. Also handy for cutting slices in your boots. Grub hose, more adzes, post hole diggers, an early weed eater, weed whip it's called, digging bars, a modified PV used. This modification allows you to roll the log up, hold it up so you can cut the firewood. Probably about a three pound pickaxe. Now I'm not an expert on these things. I'm a carpenter, but I have spent my youth logging. I've grown up in a logging culture, so I know somewhat about this. Mm -hmm. 